Hello everyone, welcome to another doll customizing video with me Akin. If you're new, welcome, welcome, we do doll customs here. Before we start, as usual, shout out to my coffee members, Ruby Rouge, Mel, Awkward Burb, Invisible Bear, and Mel again. It's interesting that there's two Mel's. Anyway, thank you so much for your support, I really really appreciate it, it's one of the reasons why this channel is still running, so yeah, thank you. If you want to know what I'm working on before the video is out, consider becoming a coffee member. Link is in the description. Okay, for this project, I want to do something that I don't usually do but at the same time not time consuming. By not time consuming, I mean no body modification, no skin color changing and all that. So we're gonna do a girl doll, that's the start. But in what theme? Mermaid? Now, for some reason, I don't want to do a mermaid doll yet. Though it would've been appropriate if it was a mermaid since it's May, but no, sorry. But then I remembered, a few years ago, Delightful, Moonlight Jewel, and many other doll artists made this very colorful, heavily decorated dolls and I was like, hmm, that's interesting. The style is called Harajuku Dekorake and if you've watched me for a while, then you know, that is so not me. But I started asking myself, do I want to make something like that? After thinking about it, I felt like I was up for a challenge and I was like, Yeah, you're right! Let me try! Let's see what I come up with. I'm gonna try to make her so cute, so kawaii, you'd wanna kill me for it. For the base, we'll be using Bunny Blanc. She's from the 2-pack with Alistair Wonderland, so I have a few of Bunny Blancs in my stock box. Gotta start using her. I think she's perfect for this project because she has the short body type, and we don't usually like ever ever high girl heads, but I think Bunny Blanc's head is a little different than most of the rest. I mean, her head is still round, but not as balloony, and her features are more defined. Also, she already has a buzz cut. Before we prep her, I'm gonna switch her hands with Draculaura's because I want her to have normal hands. They're a perfect match by the way. I cut the hair even shorter so it'll be easier to scrape the excess later. Just cut it as close to the scalp as possible. Put the head in hot water for about 30 seconds, protect your hand with a towel, and yank the head away from the body to remove it. Grab a flat metal tool and scrape the remaining stubble through the neck hole. And I'm out of frame. Extract the excess hair with tweezers. Now the head is hair free. Wipe off the factory paint with pure acetone and tissues. I wipe the head with wet wipes to clean off the excess acetone so MSC can be applied properly. I'm reattaching the head now. It's best to do the face up with the head already attached to the body so we won't have to worry about the face up cracking. Ask me how I know. I don't know if the camera picks it up, but there's a long scratch across her forehead. I hope the MSC will even that out and I'm planning to give her a bang, so it's all good. But look at her face sculpt. I think it's really cute, especially the upturned nose and the heavily molded eyes are pretty nice. It makes doing the eyes easier. Anyway, let's protect the body with some cling wrap and masking tape around the neck. Now we can spray the face with Mr. Super Clear UV Cut Flat. I usually go with 3 initial layers, but right after the second layer, it started raining. The weather's here all messed up, we're supposed to be entering dry season by now, yet it still rains pretty often. So I go straight with blushing with just 2 initial layers of MSC. Should we do an MSC layer count? Sure. With a darker pink soft pastel and small makeup brushes, I blush the face around the eyes, cheeks, lips, a little on the nose and chin. Someone pointed out how I don't give enough blushing on my doll's face and that's fair. If you watch my old videos, you can see how I couldn't control blushing the faces and they always ended up looking too intense and I hated that. So now I guess I blush the face hesitantly, applying soft pastel less than adequate. But for this one, I'm gonna try to blush the face more intensely, especially around the eyes, cheeks, and lips. I spray the face again with MSC. I actually like spraying MSC right after rain because there's no debris or dust flying around that would get stuck on the doll's face. I know it's risky, but when it comes to MSC, just try your luck, I'd say. It worked well on this doll despite the temperature and humidity weren't ideal. 
Anyway, I'm mapping the eyebrows, still using soft pastel. I'm making them green. This project is a chance for me to use all the colors I've never used before. I also put them higher than usual to give her a happier and more excited expression. Blush the face some more on some parts to bring up the intensity. Give the face another spray of MSC and I get to sketch the eyes. I'm giving her one purple eye and one orange eye. No, she does not have heterochromia, in real life she'd be wearing those crazy contact lenses. The pigment from the watercolor pencil seems to be adhering very well this time, so I lay down some more colors like the irises and whites of the eyes. Using a magenta pencil, I sketch the top eye lines as well. Time for another spray of MSC so we can save the progress and build up more colors. Once the fifth layer of MSC is set, I start building more colors of the irises and scleras as well as some shading. I sketch the pupils with a magenta pencil. I kind of vowed to make all of my doll's pupils black, but I need this doll to be colorful and vibrant and black is a strong color that could overthrow the colorfulness of this doll. So to darken the pupils, I use a navy pencil instead. Using the navy pencil, I also darken the top eye lines. For the bottom eye lines, I use magenta. Draw the eyebrow hairs. Color the nostrils. Do some more blushing. And time for another layer of MSC. Now it's just a matter of pushing and pulling the color values until you're satisfied with the opacity. And add more details like darkening the tips of the outer eyebrows. Hatching the top eyelashes with the navy pencil. How do I do with the top lashes? I think they're kind of clunky, but they work for this character. For the bottom lashes, I use a teal pencil. Draw on the lip line. Then I draw random shapes that I could think of in random colors to make the face stickers. We're going in the right direction, but I want the colors to pop even more, so I seal the face again and continue building up the colors. Spray the face again with MSC, and up until this doll, I've only ever done dots for the eye shines, but for this one, I'm gonna do heart shaped eye shines. Told you I'm doing something that is so not me. I brighten up the face stickers and seal the face one last time with a generous amount of Mr. Super Clear. We finished the face up with 9 layers of MSC, it's so vibrant and colorful. Did you ever expect me to do a face up like this? Me neither, but boy am I glad I did. I guess it's true, seeing bright colors actually brightens up your mood.
Moving on to the hair, here I'm marking guidelines for the bangs, the parts, and the rest of the hair. I'm giving her split dye hair with one side red and one side yellow. I already prefer the yarn wefts and I start by gluing the parts for the bangs that will get flipped later. Then I start filling the bangs one row at a time and I trim the wefts right away just to make things more manageable. Trim the parts of the bangs and do some fine tuning. With a wet toothbrush, I lay down the bangs in the right direction and let it dry. If you're doing a hairstyle with bangs, I suggest you to finish the bangs first because the rest of the hair can just work around it. Then I glue wet for the other side of the part, push it with a flat object so it's flush against the part of the bangs making a nice clean hair part. After that, I start filling the hair from the back, working my way up. If you notice, I'm gluing the wefts at an angle, not horizontally straight, it's because I want the ears to be showing. Before we fill the hair completely, we have to glue weft that goes vertically for the parts of the crown. Then we gotta do the same thing for the red side of the hair. Tame the hair with a wet toothbrush and let it dry. And we're done with the hair. Just kidding, this hairstyle doesn't suit this character at all. I wanna give her that short, poofy hairstyle with bangs inspired by the singer Sin. I think that hairstyle is really cute. Anyway, with a heated flat metal tool, I'm gonna press down the parts of the hair. With a heated metal chopstick, I'm curling the bangs so we can see those green eyebrows again. Not bad, the bangs is banging. Now I'm gonna curl the rest of her hair. Trim the hair to the right length. Then I unravel the ringlets with just my fingers to get that poofy texture. Hmm, this doesn't look quite right. Let's try curling and unraveling the hair again one more time. Pa -da -pa -pa -pa. Now this is more like it. She's like if Ronald McDonald and Melanie Martinez had a baby. But look how she ate this fuck-ass bob. Who even came up with that term, fuck-ass bob? Like what's wrong with bob hairstyle? Sewing time. From what I've seen, people with decora fashion wear regular conventional clothes just in bright punchy colors. So I'm gonna keep that in mind and try to make something out of this red and white stripe knit fabric. It's four-way stretch. Let's do vertical stripes. What about a leotard out of this one-piece pattern? If only I knew how to digitize doll clothing patterns, I would like make them available for you but I don't. So try to pay attention if you want to make something similar. Anyway, let's trace and cut the pattern. This fabric is really stretchy and I can feel it in my bones. If I put this under my sewing machine, it would get swallowed and distorted because my sewing machine is a bitch. So just for the leotard, let's sew it by hand using backstitch and the first thing we're gonna do is hem the armholes. Mm -hmm. 
Then I sew a folded strip around the neckline to make a turtleneck matching the stripes the best I can. Do a top stitch around the neckline for a nicer look. So the side seams together. Hem the leg holes. Sew up the butt seams. Trim the butt seam allowance and sew the crotch seams together. Turn the leotard right side out. Then I finish the opening seams. Add some snaps for closure. Let's try putting it on. I think this makes a very cute swimwear. If only knit fabric wasn't a pain in the ass to sew, I would have used it all the time. It doesn't fray, it's forgiving because if you made your pattern too small, it would just end up being skin tight and it lays so much nicer on dolls. But well, you win some, you lose some. Her hair, this leotard, she really is the descendant of Ronald McDonald. For the skirt, I cut this rectangle out of sky blue cotton fabric that is triple the length of the doll's waist circumference. Mine is 21cm and I hem one of the long sides. Then I start folding the pleats, spinning them in place. Sew the top edge to set the pleats. Each pleat is 1cm in width, there are 7 here, so 7cm exactly matches the doll's waist circumference. We can sew the waistband now. Trim the seam allowance, fold the waistband to the other side, and do a top stitch. Sew up the back seams, make sure the butt can still go through. Add the snaps. The skirt turned out nice and it fits well. The back looks funny but who cares about the back? Not me, shouldn't be you. I wanna make a fair city style jacket but I don't have many bright punchy colored fabrics. What I have is this plethora of scrap fabric so I'm gonna try to make each pattern piece of the jacket in different color and have different pattern. Something like this perhaps, I'm gonna sew the shoulder seams of the front pieces and the back piece together. Attach the sleeves. Gather the bottoms of the sleeves. Add the wristbands, well elbow bands because these are 3 quarter sleeves. It should look something like this, now we make the color. Trim the excess fabric, turn it right side out, and sew it around the neckline. The opening edges are a little offset because we're gonna fold them right sides facing each other and sew following the color seam again. Trim the seam allowance so when I pull the color up, it all looks nice. Then I'm gonna top stitch the opening edge around the neckline and all the way to the other opening edge. It looks something like this, now we can sew the side seams together.
Trim the seam allowance, turn it right side out, and gather the bottom part. Add the waistband. And the jacket is done, let's try it on. Construction wise, I'm really proud of how the jacket turned out, though I have mixed feelings about the colors and the patterns, but I'm still gonna use the jacket anyway because I'm proud of it. Another thing I saw is this rectangular casing with pointy ends, I saw all around it and leave a gap. Cut the excess fabric and turn it right side out. Cut jewelry wire the same length as the casing. Dot on hot glue on both tips so they won't stab through the fabric. Insert the wire to the casing. Close the gap with a leather stitch. Wrap it around the head and twist it at the crown to make a headband. I cut yet another rectangle out of some orange rib knit material and hem the top and bottom parts. Trim the seam allowance and sew the sides together. Trim the excess material and turn it right side out. I made another one in teal to make them socks. And we're all done with the sewing part of this doll. Time to paint. First I'm gonna give this Monster High shoes a white base, it takes about 4 layers. I'm doing the same thing to these accessories, one necklace and a few bangles. I'm not that good at painting so I paint one color at a time and each color gets two coats. I'm not feeling the hand pose anymore so I switched them out again with the regular pose Dracula's hands and I paint the nails. If you're curious, the witchy hands are from the mall monsteristas pack and the regular hands are from I believe the scary slime. They could have used more layers of paint but I got sick of it so I just proceeded by applying 3 layers of watered down matte varnish to protect the paint job. The accessories got the same treatment and we're done with the painting stage. Time for the most crucial part of this project, the decorating. I really hope this is what pulls this project together because up to this point she's just a colorful girl, not exactly decorake, you know? And I don't normally accessorize my dolls so I didn't have the materials to do that so I had to buy some. I spent around $15 for all of this and you might ask, Akin, how are they so cheap? Well, I'm a third world citizen living in a third world country, that's how. The way I see it, all of these knickknacks get put into a bomb and it explodes on the doll. That's the mentality we need to have in order to make this work, right? Anyway, let's see what we got. Assorted beads, Fimo slices, flatback charms, mini pom-poms, a bunch of 3D stickers, and they even gave me freebies, how nice of them. Y'all have E6000, I have B7000. 
is a surprise adhesive force. This was a great adhesive, best selling Europe and America, made fans around the world. Okay dude, calm down. What I like about this glue is that it has a fine metal nozzle, so it's easy to glue tiny stuff like this few more slices. Here I'm pizzazzing the pleats of the skirt with them. Let's go best selling Europe and America. The glue actually delivered, its bond is actually strong, unlike some glue. Anyway, I think the skirt turned out to be really kawaii. Glue on stickers and some more Fimo slices to the front side of the jacket. I glued pom-poms to the ears for the earrings and stick some stickers on the bangs for the hair accessories. I kinda don't like how all of them have the same texture, but I'll get over it. Here I'm making some more bracelets out of the tiny beads. I feel like I'm back in kindergarten doing this. I also made another necklace for her. I tried to sew the bigger beads on the socks, but that didn't work, so I glued them instead. Then I stick flat back charms on the shoes using hot glue because the surface isn't flat. And with that, we can call it a doll. I name her Rika. I had a blast making her. This was a really fun project and it feels good to get out of my comfort zone because everything went pretty much smoothly, from the face up all the way to the decorating. I finished her in like 12 days, not even 2 weeks, that is very fast by my standard. So what do you think of Rika? Do you like her? Do you not like her? Did I nail this challenge I gave myself? I think I did. Let me know in the comments down below. If you're an artist of any kind, I suggest you to try something that isn't your style. Who knows, maybe you'll enjoy it. I know I did. I don't know if I'll make something like this again in the future, but well, now at least I can say I've done it once. Also, I only realized this halfway through working on her. She's kind of the polar opposite of Ethel, isn't she? Maybe they're girlfriends because opposites attract or whatever. What do you think? Do you want them to be girlfriends? Sure, they can be girlfriends. I want to apologize in advance because I don't think there'll be a video in June because I'm feeling homophobic. Just kidding. Spoiler alert, I'll be back making a big burly man doll and that's gonna take a while to finish. That's why. So yeah, sorry about that. Anyway, this is the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Like, comment, share, and subscribe if you want to. See you in the next one. Bye.